In the medical spotlight today, mysterious chronic pain conditions. I'm going to focus on two of the most undertreated, fibromyalgia and pelvic pain. Fibromyalgia specialist Dr. Jennifer Cottle and pelvic pain specialist Dr. Colleen Fitzgerald are both here. Let's start with fibromyalgia, which has been making big headlines recently, including one study, very provocatively, that says fibromyalgia may be caused by sleep disorders. So Dr. Cottle, what do you think about that? Well, I think it's a really interesting thought. I really do. You know, there's so much that we still have yet to learn about fibromyalgia. However, our current research really suggests that fibromyalgia is not caused by a primary sleep disorder. Really, what we think is the underlying cause is abnormal pain processing by the central nervous system. That's the brain and the spinal cord. And basically, what that does is it causes fibro patients to have a heightened sense or awareness of pain more than other people. So the new study that came out looking at new injection for fibro pain I've been hoping there'd be something like this, but this actually was pretty pretty interesting. Well, it is a very interesting study. You know, uh, researchers really wanted to find out if lidocaine injections could help fibromyalgia pain. 62 women were in this study. They all received four injections, two in the upper body, two in the lower body, like the lower back. Um, a third of them received all lidocaine injections. Another group received placebo injections. And the final group received a mixture of both. And researchers found at the end of the study that the women who received the lidocaine injections reported decreased mechanical pain, uh, decreased heat pain, more than those who uh, receive the placebo uh, uh, injections. So let me show you uh, specifically what Dr. Cottle is speaking about. This is a, an illustration of where people with fibromyalgia typically get their pain. There are actually 18 spots, a bunch are on the front and a bunch are on the back. Researchers injected specific areas on the back, just beneath the shoulders, and they also injected areas on the top of the buttocks. And they did these four injections and got the results they're sort of intriguingly uh, enticing. And these are also similar to acupuncture points, which is, again, sort of cool that people may have thought about this in a different part of the world. You know, I think so, too. I'll, I'll tell you my, my take from this. I agree with you. I think it's an interesting study. It really adds to our fund of knowledge about fibromyalgia treatments. But really, to be able to go that one step further and make a general recommendation for fibro patients to use lidocaine injections, we simply need more studies. You know, this is a great start. But we want more data. We want bigger trials, bigger studies. But again, we have to start somewhere, and I think this could be a good start. So we'll need more information. There's also new research on what causes chronic pelvic pain, which could affect almost 40% of you. Dr. Fitzgerald, a lot of women don't they don't believe they have the diagnosis, they can't figure out they have the diagnosis. Describe what chronic pelvic pain is. So chronic pelvic pain is pain in a woman that's been going on for at least six months. And it's pain typically in the lower abdomen. It can be in the butt, the hip, even the low back. And these women will actually describe kind of cramping pain, burning pain that often makes us think it could be gynecologic in origin. But what we're finding out more and more is that this pain can actually be pelvic muscle, pelvic joint, bone, ligament, so I think it's really changing our thought process about chronic pelvic pain. Yeah, that's why it's so difficult to diagnose? Yeah, it's so difficult to diagnose because most of us don't train actually in understanding the musculoskeletal system. But in addition to that, we don't have good medical tests for it. And I think that's also what's really hard. We send a patient with pelvic pain for an ultrasound or an MRI or a CAT scan and she comes back, the test is normal. So it's very frustrating and that's why it's hard to diagnose. Well, we may not show up an ultrasound of the pelvis, but you brought a very interesting scan with you. This is a scan of someone's brain. Now, please explain to everyone what they're seeing. This is someone who has pelvic pain right. and you're seeing it in their head. Right. It's so exciting. This is really exciting new research for us and it's really up and coming. What we see in this picture is a woman with pelvic pain. The brain's cut in half. Mm -hmm. You have the right and the left side and you see these kind of hot spots, the red areas. Yeah. And those are areas where pain processing normally takes place and also emotional centers of the brain. But what for us is really encouraging is that though the pelvic imaging may be normal, we have brain imaging that's not normal. And finally, new objective evidence for a woman that this is very real. And if, if you could give me just a brief update, what is the latest research on why this pain exists? Well, the latest research is that it's not just organ-based pain, as I already mentioned, that it has to do with the nervous system, like we already discussed, problems with nerve pain, muscle pain, and even the pelvic floor muscles. And you know, those are the Kegel muscles. These muscles tend to be tight, tender, and very difficult to access other than through physical therapy. So Dr. Fitzgerald, what are the latest treatments for pelvic muscle pain? 
Well, the latest treatments are really exciting. One of the mainstays of treatment is actually something called pelvic floor physical therapy. And this is a type of physical therapy that's done by a highly trained, typically female physical therapist that is trained to do internal examinations vaginally. And we can stretch out the muscles internally and show the patient how to relax the muscles. And that can provide significant pain relief for the patient. We also are interested in doing nerve pain medical treatments as well as muscle relaxants and injections. And I think what we're learning mostly is that the sooner we see these patients, the better. Women should not live with these symptoms just because maybe it happens to be with their period or childbirth or old age. That actually the sooner you get in to be seen, the better chance we actually have to treat. It was a taboo topic, even, even to the recent era. But you guys are getting a hand on it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be right back.